Hello everyone. Uh, this is Houghton Houghton Ho from Intel. Uh, I'm working as a dev manager of uh, Open Source Technology Center uh, web platform team. Today I'm going to talk about how to accelerate your IoT and the robotics development by using web technology and the Cordova. So first of all, I will introduce why is the web technology is suitable for robotics and IoT? If we so if we look at the internet history, the for the last decades, the web technology is the realm of uh, internet. All the websites writing in uh, HTML, JavaScript, and the and the latest CSS codes. So. Here we come to the word, the time of IoT. The T means sense. So a lot of sense, including vehicles, devices, gadgets, they are all need to, uh, developer all need to implement application on for, for those things. So at the same time, the web standard group W3C is uh, developing a new standard and the specifications for the things, which we call it web of things. So in the implemented side, JavaScript, we all, we, uh, it is happening that there's a already existing JavaScript framework for the robotics. Uh, for example, the Cylon.js, the Johnny 5, and the, the robotics tools uh, for the ROS, aka ROS means uh, robotics operating system. Uh, it's very popular in the ro robotics area. So why why we need web technology for IoT? So if we uh, uh, traditionally we think IoT is come from embedded system. So normally the uh, the embedded system uses a uh, low level language like C, even the assembly codes for embedded system. But uh, the, uh, when we come to the IoT world, the things changed. Um, there's a millions of uh, developers around there. They still, uh, they also intend to develop applications for IoT world. For the web developers, uh, for the traditional web developers, for the websites, they they got uh, super uh, uh, skills and uh, experience uh, by writing HTML, JavaScript, and the CSS. For the mobile side, it's also uh, included the web technology on top of web view to writing their applications by leveraging the uh, web technology. So if we look at the number of uh, developers, mobile plus so the web developers are, are huge, are, are, large, are much larger than the traditional embedded system. So developing or, or enable a web runtime and uh, give their sufficient API support is very key and they recruit them, uh, those developers to the IoT world. So what is web tech, web applications? Um, this uh, concept actually is same, uh, is keeps same with a website. You are writing the JavaScript, the CSS and HTML codes for your website. So in the mobile time and in the IoT time, we also want to those script can be run on top of IoT and the robotics devices. So, for those three scripting languages, the they behave different uh, functionalities. So, the JavaScript is kind of behaviors. You can write in JavaScript code to control the logic and the compute computing such as uh, such things. For the CSS, it's uh, for the presentations. So uh, you can control your background color, your font size without 
uh, writing JavaScript code, just a change, change the label code. And for the HTML, uh, I, I think everyone is familiar with that. You are browsing the website and browsing Word by using browser. Uh, so all the all the element on the browser is HTML tags like uh, input code, input button, uh, like the form. They are all for the structure of your applications. So now I, I will introduce uh, today the the software and target platform. Uh, the operating system we are using today is Android Things. So uh, th this is brief introduction of Android Things. Android Things is an uh, embedded operating system uh, developed by Google and other uh, partners and vendors. So Intel is one of the uh, contribu contributor to that operating system. So this uh, Android Things is announced in, in 2015 in Google I.O. At that time, it is called Brelo. Now uh, the name is uh, uh, consolidated uh, with Android, so it's called Android Things now. So currently, it supports uh, several boards, including Intel's, NXP's, and the Raspberry Pi 3. So the basic, uh, because all the codes are now combined into AOSP, so uh, the difference with Android mobile is not so much, but for the Android Things, there is a, uh, the extra module is called Things Support Library, uh, which supports the, the, the IoT scenarios, for example, sensors and the, the single application usage, uh, which is very different with mobile's type. Now, uh, Today I'm going to use uh, Intel Job, Job Compute module. Um, this module uh, is uh, Atom based, uh, it's quad, quad core, and uh, it act actually has two types. Uh, one is uh, 550, one is 570. The difference is uh, memory and the storage difference. Other configuration are the same. Uh, one thing I want to uh, Highlight is it has a networking uh, with the latest Wi-Fi standard and the Bluetooth standards, and uh, it also have a display uh, which uh, HD HDMI output. So it's designed for the graphic usage for your IoT because we all know IoT is uh, very fragmented from from very small uh, sensor based MCU. Uh, to large screen or even even server side. So this computer board uh, will be used for today. So what is Cordova? Uh, if uh, some audience uh, are familiar with uh, mobile, where, uh, mobile times uh, and you are developing uh, mobile apps, um, for multiple platforms like iOS, Android, maybe Windows Phone, Tyson, your, your Cordova is your choice. So basically, Cordova, it was what's called PhoneGap, uh, developed by, by Ad, Adobe. Uh, now Cordova is an open source community run uh, uh, under Apache, Apache 2 license. license. So basically, on the bottom, uh, it is operating system um, of for iOS and Android and other uh, mobile uh, operating system. Now we are we are enable Android Things as a platform as a operating system for 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 IoT developers. So on the top block, this is uh, where your Cordova applications reside in. So if you look at the green uh, green block, which is web view, uh, so this web view is a key runtime or engine to allow your uh, HTML, JavaScript code, and the CSS code run top of that. So uh, this web view contains uh, lots of web standard APIs. Uh, 
in the Android Scenes, we, we are using Chromia WebView, so it will bring uh, any any modern and the latest features, bug fixing, security fixing inside it. So uh, that is one type of APIs. The other type of APIs is Cordova plugins. So um, the plugin uh, mechanism is for for developers to write uh, to leverage the native capabilities because not all the capabilities will be exposed in WebView. So there's a uh, uh, around 20 core Cordova plugins on the Cordova upstream. We enabled most of them. And uh, uh, there's a community over 1,000 uh, Cordova plugin can be reused uh, as well. And uh, you can see the blue box. This is, this is you can customize plugins. Uh, what what it means? You can write your own plugins uh, by your own API interfaces. So, for example, you have a special specific sensors without any existing Cordova plugin supported, and you can develop a Cordova plugin uh, step by step about following the steps and satisfy your needs. So. In the left top blocks, uh, that is where your 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 application reside in. As we said, HTML, JS, CSS file are there, and some other resources like uh, the image file, icon file can be there. So the config file is a key to let the Cordova toolchain understand how your application is, how it's organized. I, uh, we, we will cover this in following slides. So uh, when you are when you want to develop your IoT uh, or Cordova apps on top of Jaw and Android Scenes, you have to set up your hardware and the software environments. So basically, your host, your development host PC is a uh, same requirement as uh, Android Studio because uh, Android Studio is required to install. It. You can use Windows, Macintosh, and the Linux as your host machine. And for the devices, obviously you need to have a draw board and other sensors uh, 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 can be connected with that. And you, you uh, optionally, you can have a uh, display with the HDMI uh, cable connected, and you also ha have a keyboard and mouse uh, to connect with a draw board can to have a input and a mouse input. And you also have uh, can have other sensors that are supported on the draw. So this is how I'm going to uh, uh, use for today's live demo. Uh, so uh, you can see on the on the right hand, uh, the bottom board is uh, Intel job board. On the top is uh, Google Shells. It's allow uh, you plug in your sensors very easily. Otherwise, you need to put the wires into the pin and easy to broken. So this guy is very useful, uh, but not 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 mandatory. And you can see several ports we are using for today's live demo. The port one is for power, obviously uh, for power supply. And the port two is, is a USB type C. Uh, this guy will connect to your host machine on your USB port. Uh, so it can, uh, it's useful for your debugging and uh, ADB operation, ADB installs, such a thing like that. And the uh, post three and four are only for the display connection. Uh, post three is for the USB connect to the display for power only. And the post four is for the display connect. That is e easy to understand. So let's go to port five. This guy is a, a buzzer sensor, uh, which is included in the Groove uh, dev, dev kit. And uh, port, 
Pod 6 is a uh, LED. Uh, we will not go into use that, but we do have the plugin ready for, for this guy. So for the software uh, uh, environment uh, setup, it's, it's all the first three steps are exact same with uh, Android, uh, Android Mobile and Android Sense native developing. My colleague have other sessions about how to write Java applications for Android Sense on top of Draw. So I'll bypass those and you can click the link to follow steps to set up. For Cordova, Cordova uh, implementation, you, you also need to install the Chrome browser. This guy is mostly for, for our debugging, debugging and uh, uh, writing the codes. Uh, I will show it, use it uh, frequently today. And the Node.js environment. Uh, this is where our Cordova 2 chain is on top. And obviously, after Node.js installed, you can use npm, GA, npm install minus g Cordova to install all the two chain. So uh, that's it. And we are going to go to the uh, lab, uh, which is with uh, simple steps, actually three steps to create a Codova app. Let me do that. I'll uh, ex exit those commands in background and explain one by one uh, when it's uh, running under background. So first command is, uh, is about create uh, applications. Codova create with your folder name and with your application name. So if you're familiar with any Android development cycle, this name will be registered on your application uh, system. Then you, you're going to have a, a folder called hello created it. So into the hello directory, you, you could have uh, uh, add a platform called Android. So Cordova platform and Android is that guy. In that, in that step, it will uh, fetch latest Android um, support library, support code into locally and the compile uh, and uh, get it ready. So then the last step is Cordova build. So that simple three or four steps will get your hello world built uh, locally and, and, and the APK is ready. So if uh, there's uh, other, uh, other command line options you can use, uh, please check the latest Cordova command line uh, documentation online on the Cordova app tree. So, uh, for example, uh, Cordova build, by default, it will build a debug version. Uh, if you want to a release version, play, uh, add a minus minus release, I uh, will go you, give you a release version. So for the platform, you can add also add a version after the Android uh, word uh, to, to specific which version you are, want to use. Uh, currently, we are reuse Android uh, for Android things because most of code can be and the plugin can be used that. In the future, we might talk with the Cordova upstream to to see either uh, whether we need add a new platform for for Android things. So let's go to okay. Uh, there's a. Arrow, I think. Okay, uh, I copy paste issues. Anyway, uh, let me go to the prepared hello directory that is the same one. Next, I will uh, go, go through the, the, the files that created after the steps. First is config XML. So uh, I'm opening open this. 
this guy is very key for your applications. You can customize your name, your descriptions, your author with your email, and and your platform, uh, which are using. Uh, here we only have Android and the plugins. Uh, we can talk it later. And this guy is very important. It's it tell, tells your two chain where your entry is, which is, we call it index HTML. So we have triple W uh, directory created it. So with, with all the files, I will come back to that later. And we, we have a hooks folder. This folder, uh, basically if you uh, do not want to customize uh, the command line behaviors, there's nothing here, there. But if you want to do some uh, uh, add platform, add plugin steps before and after, you can write script there. Uh, uh, there's an online document you can refer to. And not just node modules, platforms and plugins those three folders are auto automatically created and upgraded by the command line too so basically you do not need to edit them and copy them and just do anything so uh in my practice when i develop our cordova applications i will use i will use a source control tool uh, i use git so I put uh, those three folders by uh, in the ignore files. And uh, there's one file called package.json. This guy is also auto-created, auto auto-updated. You do not need to edit it anymore. So bypass it as well in your git uh, ignore file. So the key, com key files or key codes is under your triple W. Let's go to the index HTML. If you're familiar, again, familiar with any website development, uh, this guy is a single entry for your application. Uh, you can see the CSF file is included and imported in here. And then you can see the two scripts file in, imported. One is Cordova.js. This guy you do not need to edit. Uh, uh unless you want to debug or, or 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 do your own things there i do not suggest to do any modification and uh, uh under gs folder index.js this is where your logic your codes reside in so i will open that file later and you by default you have you have a dive DOMs, uh, DOM elements are ready, uh, ready here, ready there. So uh, let me go to the CSS file. And you can check the body styling, APP styling there. And you can have the index HTML, uh, index.js for your JavaScript uh, logic. So one thing I want to mention is when you add your Android platform, there's a subfolder under platform called Android. Uh, that that guy's most Android codes reside in. If you add other for, uh, uh, platform like this, there's a subfolder called iOS there. So run the applications is also easy. Uh, we have a uh, uh, two ways to run it. One thing, one way is Cordova run, which is preferred. Uh, another way is uh, uh, import your your platform Android folder into your Android Studio and uh, run and debugging uh, the applications as as normal uh, Java or Android applications as as you want. So today I only use Cordova run to that. So I so I'll stop sharing to to let you get a screen. Cordova Run is uh, smart enough. 
do a check whether your code changes are uh, happening. If, if, if it, uh, okay, I did not connect my. Uh, uh, before that, you can check whether your device is ready. I have a jewel uh, attached. And then, uh, if, uh, let's continue. If uh, Colova Run detects any changes, it, it will rebuild your APK. If no changes, so no need to rebuild the APK and uh, uh, install that APK and launch the applications. So I guess you can see my my Cordova Hello World running. This is my draw board with sensors. So yeah. Okay, let me back to my sharing. All right. So for the life cycles, you uh, as as an as an Android applications or activities, uh, there's uh, three events you you need to take care. One is uh, when the application is starting, it's ready for use. All the plugins and the platform are ready to use. Device device ready event will be fired, and when the application moving in the background. The pause event failed, and when the application returned to for uh, from from the background, resume is uh, failed. So pause and the resume uh, are useful when you want to want to save data when your application moving background background because uh, Android can queue any background applications when it's needed. So basically, you, when you want to save some data or states of your applications, you need to do something on pause. When you recover from background, you need to, to do on the resume event uh, listener. So I'm going to show where the code is. So uh, in the default index.js, you, uh, the by default, it's bundled with a device ready event, and the callback is on device ready. And this guy will continue call receive event. Actually, you can do anything on these events uh, here as well. So, uh, on receive event, uh, it's with uh, connect with your DOM element to change the styling uh, from noun to block or or block to noun for the different uh, DOM, DOM. And uh, finally, it will print any uh, con uh, message on the console log. So if you want to add a listener to other events like pause and resume, please do it here and copy paste code to, to for your logic. So next, and, uh, I'm. Um, uh, most, uh, most, uh, most best thing I like for the web applications on on this is uh, we it is allow you to do the live debugging with the code changes take effect immediately and uh, if uh, all your logic you are satisfied you can get the code changes on your host uh, without. Uh, Rebuild package to APK, upload to devices. Those steps are not required. That is the most benefit for the for the web applications on the on the on the devices. So let me show how to do the remote debugging uh, and the live editing. First, uh, let me go to new uh, tab, which is called Chrome. Inspect. So this page will list any any devices connect to your host machine, and if our uh, applications are remote debug ready, it will be listed here. So we, if we click inspect, we, we, it will open a new window that of Dev Tools. In that in that. Uh, window you can do the live debugging. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go, go to introduce the three tabs, elements, console, and sources, which is uh, most useful. 
uh, on the element, you can you can select any code code in the code part and to see which element is uh, related. And um, this toggle is for screencast. If you do not want to see how the application look like, you can you can open and close it. And this uh, this uh, this toggle is enable the select uh, element on the on the GUI. By the way, this screen is exact same on on the draw board. So when you select element on the device on the on the GUI, uh, related code will be highlighted. I like I uh, like this. So on the on other panel like styling, you can actually change any styling or uh, or here. Uh, let me use the background color for example. If we change red, it, it will be change red image. Okay, there's a bug. Okay. Not uh, auto refreshed. So when you change the red, it's change the red immediately also in the device. So next, uh, I'm go going to show you uh, a live debugging uh, with that. Here you can so see all the sources on the device. It's uh, using the file prot protocol, the index uh, file is, the GS file is. CSS file is there where our codes reside on. So, but so those codes reside on the device, um, not on your host machine. You are editing your codes on your, own, on your host machine. I want to my edit my host machine's code and take effect immediately on the device. So how, how can I do that? First, add a folder to the workspace. I'm going to add the hello, Triple W folder uh, on this. Prepare. All right. So Chrome will ask the permission about file directory uh, accessible. So now you have two 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 folders. One is triple W on your host. One is triple uh, W on your device. Now next step is map a file. When you map the index.html on the device, this one is on the device. So the device file directory will dismiss. Um, that one you can you can you can I'm going to hide the screen to have this one. So uh, DevTools is smart enough to mapping all other files uh, immediately, like index.js, index CSS file. So one, one more thing is when you open that file, that is locally on your host. So you can also open that file on your, on your other editors. So let me do this. If I do, if I change my background color to green, It will change to green as well, and in your other editors, it to green as well. This is so green here. So I can change the the blue here, and it's take effect on the on your dev tools as well. So change the blue as well. So this is how live debugging, how live change your code. So I'm I'm going to show you how to set set breakpoints and the remove breakpoints uh, for your JavaScript code, which is also very easy. I'm going to close this guy, open index.js file. So, for example, you want to do some debugging on your uh, device ready function. You have a local var. Of uh, I um, OT have fast, and you want to check 
you want to check that var, uh, whether it's a correct value. So you can set breakpoint or remove breakpoint by single click. And when the break breakpoints are available, uh, you can see in the breakpoints uh, panel listed. So it's very easy. Um, let let's uh, let's uh, debug do a debugging here. You can also open the console uh, to to do your debugging. So because this guy this code changes is inside of app var, and if you want to those code take effect, you need execute this guy again. Now we are stopped at this function this line. And we can use console.log4 to check the values. So it's, this is very easy. And when you uh, want to continue to resume your execution as well. So you can also uh, remove that spring points. And you can use other bring points uh, like the event listener like the down break points, very easy for, for your other. Uh, this is a good category. I use that a uh, lot for, for our debugging. So now uh, I'm going to talk about, about plugging. As I said, plugging is not very uh, necessary for our Hello World because that Hello World is, is easy. Just a slow show a, show a GUI without any uh, device capability access. But when you want to access the devices, the, the web standard API is not sufficient. You, you need to use a Codoa plugin. That is how, how it's come from. So basically, Codoa uh, plugin, one plugin contains JavaScript side code and the Java code. So the Java code is uh, responsible to talk with your Android OS and uh, the operating system directly with the Java API, the Android Java APIs. The JavaScript code is uh, interface for the app application developers. So, but uh, so Java G, the 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 plugin JS code and the, the plugin Java code they they can talk to each other. That when you call some JavaScript functions, we will call plugin the Java code in plugin, then talk with the Java plugin, then talk with the operating system. That is basically how its plugin works. So manage your plugin is very easy. You can use uh, Kodoa plugin add with uh, several several ways. You can add uh, the, with the plugin ID. All the plugins are registered on the npm gs.org. Uh, you can search that with plugins. And also, you can get that with a uh, Cordova uh, official website. Or you can get uh, our online Git URL. We lots of uh, Cordova plugins uh, host their code on the GitHub. Or you can download or do your local editing of uh, any plugin with a local pass. To remove, just offer the plugin ID, that is fine. And to list what plugin is on your, on your, on your applications, just use a Codoa plugin. So uh, how to, I'm going to show a lab about how to use a buzzer sensor I showed just now. And the buzzer sensor is working with the vibration plugin. So uh, we can use uh, three steps again. Uh, this is new steps, Codoa plugin add with the vibration plugin uh, GitHub URL. Uh, you know, you, 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 you may observe there's a dash. This means a branch name. Otherwise, it will check out the master, uh, which is the enabling is not happening there. Then you can run the Codora build and Codora run uh, with that. So um, when you when you have those have that plugin uh, bundled with your APK, you can start your uh, Chrome uh, inspector 
and doing your debugging. So I'm going to install this guy again because this guy stop. So because this guy already have the vibration plugin there, so I can I can run it on like on my device. So when the app okay, it's show now. When the app restarted, uh, reinstalled and uh, started again, the inspector will be ready for use. So I'm going to, because the vibration API is exposed to a navigator object. So under app navigate, okay, it also have the type and uh, you can have all the inform uh, all the function under navigation. Our function is uh, vibrate. Okay. Um, you can input, for example, you can you want the buzzer to beep for three seconds. So vibrate uh, uh, three three o o o three milliseconds. That is how it works without code in your app actually and if uh, you can we can play more fun thing is uh, uh, it's also ha can have the James Bond themes with a buzzer uh, let, me, let me try it okay remember that same copy it Okay. So basically, uh, you, you can accept an array with uh, uh, old old number is how much how much millisecond will beep. Uh, this guy is how much silence mode uh, numbers. So that will be uh, it's a very very simple, not like the YouTube one, but uh, uh, it uh, means something. Uh, okay, uh, so how the Java and the JavaScript com communicate with each other? So basically, you have a plugin uh, XML that is uh, how tells the Cordova how uh, what the function is, where the JavaScript code is. Uh, where the Java code is. So, and uh, on the GS codes, the most important is Cordova X e e X e C with the service, which is mapping with your Java 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 class service with the action uh, mapping with uh, execution execute uh, com, uh, function called action, and you in this function you can compare with uh, whether the action is uh, is a function and you can do that so let me show um, show an example about create your own plugins so you can follow uh, first for uh, next two pages for your Cordova plugin uh, so um, first thing is you you need to define your interface for example, I need I define my interface echo.c with a string uh, as a parameter as a, with a success callback and an error callback, and then I can use a plug man which uh, can be installed with npm toolchain again to use that create add platform and uh, doing your own code changes. Add the package JSON, and uh, and then your your plugin is ready, and uh, and then you can add that plugin into your application, run it and build it and try it. So, uh, I'm going to show how the Echo plugin look like. So this guy is the most important one. Um, it has name. This 
And this this section is talking about uh, JavaScript code where it is and where the, the object it want to expose. You can remember echo dot, that is where it is. And then where the Android part is, uh, point to your Java code location, your namespace, and the exact, et cetera. So it is, con it is point to JS file and the Java file. Let's go to Java file. So it use the, uh, the Node.js expose module dot C, that's its function where, where you can use in your JavaScript with the parameters and Cordova.exec is called with a service name. This this guy is found in Java class, the the action name and the arguments. So come to the Java code, the class is called echo. Uh, it's extended the Cordova plugin class. If you're interested, you can go to the document and check the API. And the most important thing you need in override the execute function and doing do the action comparison. If uh, the action is say, so go go to the C command C function here. So C function doing the string comparison for non for non strings. If uh, it is really string have content then hide the content and I'm from Java. So let me try. We all we already have uh, have the echo object. So echo.c I today. Oops. Okay, I may forget to add that plugin, but uh, you can do it offline. Um, so you can also refer refer uh, refer to advanced plugin development. The, this this link is full full online document. You can refer to and read through. And uh, for the Cordova plugin, it also have life cycle. You can you can use. And if you are doing the event listener, uh, most the event listener are come from system. Just now, I just uh, show the the trigger is from the JavaScript side. You need to call echo.c, but sometimes uh, uh, some changes happen underneath, happen on the system, like the uh, the Bluetooth connected with uh, sensors sensor sent some data and you want to get that data from JavaScript. That is how the event listener doing. You can reference uh, tons of uh, plugin with that function. The network information is a similar one. You can refer to the code. Also, uh, because the Cordova plugin has a Java code uh, reciting, you, you want to debug your Java code uh, to resolve your problem. So you can also uh, doing that in the Android Studio, uh, import the pro project uh, platforms, Android directory into Android Studio and uh, setting the breakpoints and uh, evaluate your values as, as you want. Uh, that's a normal process of Android Studio. So finally, I will going to show you some resources you can use and that starts you and doing uh, further uh, web applications. First two resources are for, for the API and the online document that is for the web standard API, um, MDN and the W3 schools. Uh, W3 school you can also do in the live, live editing, live live debugging on, on your browser as well. Uh, that is housed on the server. And, and the third thing is uh, uh, because different uh, uh, 
uh, operating system, different versions have the different ver WebView version, have different uh, API readiness. So can I use .com, you can uh, search which API is ready on your current uh, OS and versions. So in the latest uh, uh, Android Sense Developer Preview 4, the WebView version is uh, Chromia 52. So you can get that version to, to mapping when it's ready. And uh, uh, we 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 also have the uh, we also host a GitHub repo to for Android Sense ready plugins. You can open open that to check which plugin are ready, how to use that. Uh, we, with that, let me go to status page. So most of Cordova latest plugin core plugins are verified. And some need changes. We offer the offer the uh, link, and some some is a working in process. Some will not change uh, supported on the Android scenes. You can check that pages. So we are not uh, verify other tons of uh, plugins, third third party plugins. So if you want to use that and verify it's working or not working, and you can submit a PR to our repo to add a status uh, to share with other people. So uh, for today's slides, I also share the Hello World applications, the vibration plugin and echo plugin uh, for your reference. You can do that uh, and check the code changes online. So that's it. If any questions, please send send me an email. I'm I'm happy to work with your guys and answer any questions and and uh, hope hopefully we can collaborate in the future. Thank you again. Bye bye.